excited to be here and excited to, to tell the story of Hope Lab past, present, and, and looking a little bit into the future. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about um, the organization in the background, talk with you about what we learned um, through our first product, Remission. This is Roxy, the star heroine of, uh, of that game. Um, and then talk a little bit about where we are now and how we've taken the concepts and the things we've learned about games uh, and brought them into tech platforms and other kinds of uh, tech products for young people. So Hope Lab is a uh, fu funded nonprofit of the Omidyar Group. Uh, the Omidyar Group is the philanthropic arm of Pam and Pierre Omidyar. Pierre is the founder of eBay. Um, they're now funding, depending on how you count, eight to 12 organizations that all have some greater mission um, to do good things in the world. Hope Labs focuses on improving health and well-being of kids and young adults, and most of our work now focuses on teens and young adults. Um, and uh, the backstory, which I always love to tell about Hope Lab, I is a really interesting one. So Pam Omidyar, uh, wife of eBay founder Pierre, um, was actually had an interesting history. She was working in a lab, and she was a very avid game player, a very avid gamer. And one of the phenomena that she actually thought was quite interesting, I'll talk about in a minute, was about young people not taking all their chemo meds or the antibiotics when they were going through cancer treatment, even though there were doctors helping them to do that, even though there were parents helping them to do that. And she had an idea, uh, being a gamer herself, she didn't know how, but that there would be some way that a video game might help cure cancer. So a little bit uh, about the problem they were tackling at that time. So these are chemotherapy pills. Uh, the young person going through chemo for cancer needs to take the chemo pills for about three years after treatment. So this is almost 1,100 pills that you see up on the screen. This is uh, the number of pills that young people were actually taking. So people were generally missing, uh, or generally will miss about 20% of their doses. Um, and that's really significant. It can dramatically increase the chances that they'll uh, not stay in remission or have a recurrence of cancer. So it's a really big problem. Um, and so uh, Hope Lab set out uh, with, a, with a group of um, clinicians, uh, researchers, and designers to try to tackle this problem and to try to understand how a game, the experience of a game, the narrative of a game might help, um, might actually help improve uh, the cancer outcomes of these young people. So the game that was created was called Remission. Um, it was a game that allowed a young person to actually navigate through the body and to uh, blast away cancer cells. And what was interesting, which is the case with a lot of games and even things we're still seeing, there was an initial hypothesis that was that just making it more fun for the young person to understand what was going on inside their body and what role the chemo drugs were playing would be the thing that would actually help them, encourage them to change their behavior. It turned out that was actually not true. And it took Hope Lab many iterations and several hypotheses to actually get to um, what we think about really as the, the kind of active ingredient. And so Hope Lab went through several iterations of the product and then ultimately through randomized controlled trials. I'll give you the punchline in a minute. But what we learned in these RCTs was that the kids uh, who were playing the game had higher levels of chemo in their bloodstream, which means they were taking the drug more regularly. Um, and they, uh, they had actually self-reported that they took the chemo drugs and the antibiotics more consistently. Um, so really interesting findings that the experience of playing this game uh, could help that happen. But what was really even more interesting was uh, the fMRI studies that, that uh, we engaged in after doing that initial randomized control trial. And what was a really interesting phenomenon that people were observing was that you needed to play the game to actually have the, um, the, the sort of active result. And so the, the uh, slide you see above is an fMRI study basically showing the difference between a young person watching remission and a young person playing remission. And what you can see on the, on the playing remission side is centers of motivation, excitement, and memory lighting up that were not lighting up when you were playing. So really interesting uh, findings and hypotheses around um, agency, around uh, the, the feeling that the young person actually had some power and had some control over their disease. And really, that was a really important finding for Hope Lab and one that we have tried to, to carry forth into our work. 
And so the way we've kind of codified that in the work that we're doing is we think about, and this is very consistent with a couple of presentations I've seen today, should, should be, we think about a health outcome or a state of health, the heart that we want to see. And then we think about and try to understand what are the health behaviors that will lead to that health outcome? What's the psychology that's informing those health behaviors for the positive or the negative? Uh, what is it about how you're feeling about yourself um, uh, that is ha that's making you engage in a behavior that's positive, engage in a behavior that's not helping you? Um, and then how do we think about, because we're talking about young people, and we're also trying to do things that can really broadly scale. How do we think about how technology might contribute, might impact that psychology so that we can impact the health behavior, so that we can impact health? So this sort of recipe or prescription is what we sort of use as a framing uh, exercise when we think about the projects and products that Hope Lab works on. Um, so that was kind of a very quick run through Remission, which was, was really the founding story. And from 2000, Remission launched in 2005. The work started in 2001. Um, Remission 2, uh, a mobile version, is still active in the market. So this is really the product of many, many years of, um, of iteration, of testing, and of studying. And what we've been trying to do over the past three years, at my tenure at Hope Lab, is to really um, take what we learned from that era and to try to understand how we can apply some of those learnings to some of the problems we're seeing today with young people and health and healthy behaviors, and how we might create or co-create with young people and with others um, impactful solutions that can really improve health outcomes. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, about how and about the how we do it. Um, we talk about Hope Lab uh, as an organization that really fuses science and design. So our staff at Hope Lab are scientists. We have psychologists, we have neuroscientists, designers, human-centered design, uh, design uh, researchers, um, uh, information designers, um, and then product or project managers and developers. We actually don't have tech developers in-house. We partner on the different projects that we work on, depending on what the project is, and I'll talk about some examples um, and give you a sense of the kinds of uh, tech firms we're partnering with. So um, what we've, we've, been, we've been codifying the approach. And what you'll see up here is, is kind of a, a little bit of a double helix. And what you can see along the blue is the science uh, track, the, um, the empirical needs assessment, psychological targeting, the empirical pilot. We do. Uh, we're a science-based organization. We do studies of all the work that we do. And then on the green side, the design, the design line. So design and market research, building prototypes, testing prototypes, and then taking those out into the field, um, into pilots, and then ultimately to scale. And one of the pieces that doesn't actually appear on this slide, but is really, really important for the work we're trying to do right now, is the market context in which this intervention exists. And so one of the things that we've really been trying to do at Hope Lab over the past few years is to take these really great, impactful interventions and get them out broadly used in the market. And as many of you know, that can be a hard thing to do um, for all sorts of reasons. The economics of the way healthcare is paid for, um, the difficulty of, of actually getting something that can get broad adoption and use. And so we also spend a lot of time both thinking about partners. Where are there partners who have very strong distribution networks and distribution capabilities whose interests are aligned with ours. So the context in which all of this work takes place is one where we're really thinking hard about market context, um, business models, making a market. How do we actually bring these things into the world in a way where they'll be adopted and used and where we actually can see the impact that we're hoping to have? Um, so what I want to do now is go very quickly through uh, a few of the projects that we're working on right now. And I'm going to start out with the, the one that my, my t-shirt represents. Um, and I'll start out with each one talking a little bit about the problem that we're working on or trying to solve. So this project, uh, Vivibot, is, is looking at the challenge of teens and young adults with cancer. So one of the things we know about teens and young adults with cancer is that their outcomes have not progressed as rapidly as the outcomes of kids or adults. 
And there's a lot of hypotheses around this, many of which have to do with being adolescent or being a young adult. You're at a time in your life where you're rebelling. You're at a time in your life where you're moving from parent care to self-care. So there's lots of reasons why this is a particularly tough time. You're struggling. You're, you're actually at the developmental stage where social acceptance and, and social success is what's really driving you. And so what we've tried to do with this project is, is really deeply understand what might support young people, teens and young adults, going through cancer treatment to um, mitigate some of the things that are really big problems for them, depression, anxiety, um, and often uh, what we think of as social function that keeps them from adhering to their medication regimen or the other regimens, the eating, the sleeping, the things that really will help them have optimal outcomes. So the process that we went through, uh, which you're seeing a little snippet of here, is that we spent a lot of time with young people with cancer. We worked uh, doing focus groups and, and uh, work at CancerCon, the biggest gathering of young people with cancer. We have an advisory group of young people um, who have worked with us very closely on uh, what the app should be like, uh, what, what, you know, what, what kind of attributes it should have. And what we ended up designing was Vivabot which is uh, a chatbot. And it's designed for cancer survivors two to five years off treatment. I'm gonna actually pop down and just show it to you. Um, content was developed uh, based on basically taking a positive psychology intervention from Judy Moskowitz at Northwestern and adapting that for this purpose. We also have um, a, a set of videos that were recorded by the young people who are our cancer advisory group who are going through experience, personal experiences that they have had. And I'm actually not running the chatbot demo because, you know, sometimes those things don't work. But um, at the end of the presentation, uh, I'm going to actually send anybody here who uh, is interested in playing around with it and or especially those of you who have connections with young people who are either going through cancer treatment or are within the two years post-cancer treatment because we're actually currently in trial. So we've done a usability study and we're now actually in trial and we're looking at the impact of this intervention on um, a, whole range of, uh, a whole range of sort of psychological metrics in young people. So this is just an, one example of, of how we're taking this process of our science, science research team and our design team and bringing it together to try to create um, an intervention and then taking it out into the field and doing uh, empirical testing. So that's number one. The second is, uh, is an, another uh, significant challenge in the adolescent young adult space. And this one focuses on high risk teen moms and their babies. And so uh, lots and lots of challenges of being a low income teen mom and the baby of that mom. Um, you know, much, much poorer health outcomes, higher preterm birth, lots of things that are not terrific for that mom or her child. And what we were looking at there was how might we actually bring um, both a behavioral intervention and digital technology to an evidence-based program that was purely a bricks and mortar program. So we teamed up with an organization called Nurse Family Partnership, which many of you might be familiar with. NFP serves about 30,000 families a year. Um, and delivers an, an evidence-based protocol. It's been, it's a 40-year-old protocol. It's highly, highly uh, efficacious, but they're working with a teen and young adult um, user base and nothing had been digitized. And so one of the things that we, we were thinking about was how might we actually bring the, the attributes and the tools that we can get um, through, digital, through a digital intervention to this already very efficacious program. So what we did with Nurse Family Partnership was built a digital platform called Goal Mama. What we learned was actually the big, one of the, the biggest predictors of success, will not surprise most people in this room, of the moms who successfully complete this program and who achieve all the benefits, is the ability to learn to set work towards and achieve goals. And so basically what is inside of this app, this takes the form of an app or a digital platform, is both kind of some logistics for the program, but also um, a, a goal setting, coaching, reward um, sort of mechanism that helps those moms learn that skill and then achieve that skill through, um, through the work. 
This one we built in partnership with a company called Ayogo. Ayogo is based in Vancouver. They're a team of behavioral scientists and game developers who've built a behavior change platform where they actually build white label products for, um, for organizations. So we brought our team of scientists and designers together with their technology team to build Goal Mama. And what we're really interested in now is the potential to take you know, we're a, we're a philanthropy, so we're trying to do things where when we do the upfront work, it can then be uh, redistributed out to other programs. So we're starting to explore where else we might use the kind of engine we've already built within the Ayogo platform to work on some other behavior change programs. Um, so moving into the final section, the third area that we're tackling right now is a, is a broader and very pervasive one, which is um, adolescent depression anxiety, depression, suicide. And what we're looking at there is a real challenge and, and a problem in that area. You're all uh, very aware of this. We're seeing these signals in society. And where we're focusing right now at Hope Lab is around loneliness and social isolation as precursors to and predictors of depression and anxiety. So uh, you've probably seen many of these statistics about loneliness. It uh, predicts current and future depressive symptoms, suicide ideation, and self-harm behavior in youth. Youth who are lonely have lower sleep quality, bigger, a lot more stress and anxiety. And so what we're really trying to do here is work with young people. In this case, we're working in kind of the high school to college transition time for the moment. And really try to understand whether we might be able to develop um, or co-develop uh, an intervention that can really try to tackle loneliness and social isolation and get a little upstream of depression and anxiety. So the work we're doing is twofold. A lot of design research and work in the field with young people. And we're also doing some work uh, looking at natural language and machine learning to understand how loneliness and social isolation appear in social media uh, language and syntax. And so this is an earlier stage project, but we're kind of in the process right now of, of doing work um, and kind of beginning to, uh, to bring together the insights and the concepts that will help us um, begin to think about whether there's an intervention there. And this is one where we can imagine, and I think we, we would anticipate, trying to work with um, a company or a platform or a developer who's been doing some work in this space and to try to build off of what uh, has already been developed there. So we're working right now with a couple of platforms that provide kind of uh, a broad range of services for college students, but, um, but we're really thinking broadly here about, about how these things might um, come to life. Um, so a little bit of a kind of a, a quick whirlwind history of Hope Lab. I'm going to pop this up because um, I want you to have some of those, uh, those that contact information. Um, and so uh, we, we sort of went from the game, uh, remission the game, to a suite of products and services where we're really trying to take the mechanics and the learnings from games, uh, what we've learned in this period, the, the past 15 or 20 years that we've been working on this about behavioral science and behavior change, and really bring that together with great design and really human youth uh, infused youth-led design to develop um, and build these products. So as I said, in every project we're working on, we've, we've really engaged youth and will continue to do so as co-designers. Um, and we're very interested in talking with, um, with folks in this community, uh, particularly those who have skills that are very compatible with ours. Uh, we're looking at virtual reality. We're thinking about how to bring in and stay on top of um, the technology side of this so that we can find complementary uh, partners and continue to do this work. So um, I would ask you to do a few things. One, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram. The, the uh, sites are up there. And then if you do know anybody who might be interested in or you have networks that you might want to send information about the Vivabot cancer trial out to, um, there's a website, hivivabot.com, um, or that link on the right will take you right to the Vivabot and Facebook Messenger. So thanks for your time and look forward to questions if anyone has any.